Hey everyone, a couple of you recently emailed me asking me how to create ink dubs that bleed into paper in After Effects. I thought since similar, I mean, there were very similar questions, so I thought it would be prudent to put together a short video showcasing to everyone how this is achieved. So we're trying to aim for something that looks like what you're looking at on the screen right now, which is basically handwritten text that bleeds into the paper. Okay, and so to do that, what I've done is I have created a composition. And in this composition, I have a layer that is just simply text. And then on top of that layer, I have created a path to reveal through time. And by time, I mean 15 frames. That, I mean, uh, one second, 15 frames is what I've determined that this is going to take. And then eventually, I'm going to add a, a track mat to the text layer so that it is revealed through the path that I had created on top of it. But for now, I'm going to turn that off. So you know how to do this from the text uh, module that we saw a few weeks ago, how to reveal text. Now, what I want to do at this point is I want to focus on the effects that are applied to create that ink look and feel. So for that, I'm going to use an adjustment layer. And the reason for that is because what the effects that we're going to be applying to this composition can work not just with text, but they can work with anything that has an alpha channel in it. So if you have a file that you have brought in as a PNG with transparency or a, let's say an Illustrator file, you can simply swap that for the text layer or place it in there if you need it and the effects will affect it the exact same way as it's doing what I'm about to do. So it's extremely handy to use an adjustment layer for this particular case. So in this adjustment layer, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make my text appear from the center out as if it was being revealed by its alpha information. And for that, we're gonna be using the matte choker layer. I mean the matte choker filter. Now remember, I'm gonna apply that matte choker filter to the adjustment layer. Remember that matte choker controls the expansion or contraction of my alpha information within a layer. You saw this when we were doing green screening. You have used this filter before and you knew you learned how to work with it in that particular module. So now what I wanna do at this point is I wanna start working with the, with the values so that this is revealed in about a second or a second 15 frames. Let's go ahead and do a second and 15 frames. Let's go all the way to the end. And I'm going to apply keyframes for the geometric softness, the choke, and the gray level softness. Those are the, first, the three things that I want to keyframe. So I want to make sure that my, key, my, my ink or my text looks like that when, this is, when the one and a half seconds have gone by. And then I want to go back to the beginning and start playing around with those values to make this disappear. So my first inclination is to increase the softness on the geometric one that one and that makes things disappear maybe i want to increase the choking value as well so i can go ahead and work with those two values until i get to a happy medium then at that point i also want to perhaps increase or decrease the value of my softness on the edges just so that i can get a little bit more of a less aliasing around the edges when this appears okay so that one these two affect the way the gray so level softness and the geometric softness affect the way the edging or the aliasing of the edges of your uh, alpha channel looked like. And I want it to look exactly as the, when it was written. And so that works really well. So now my text is being revealed from the center or from the alpha out, let's say from the center of the alpha out. So that takes care of that reveal. The next thing I want to do is I want to apply a, a turbulent displacement. Okay, so that turbulent displacement we have worked with as well when we were creating fire and smoke. Remember that you can go ahead and increase or decrease the amount in or, or when we were doing the dust, when the text turned into dust exercise, that also, that's where we also use this particular filter. So for this one, what I want to do is I want to change the amount. So let's start keyframing that value. Well, we're going to work with both the size and the alpha information. Now you notice that this basically changes everything significantly as if I work on the actual amount. So I want to reduce the reach or the size of that deformation by bringing this value down significantly so that I get these little wiggly edges. That's what I want. I want them to look a little wiggly as if they were ink. And so a value of two works well for that particular, maybe three. Let's, let's go back to, let's make it about three or four. Three would work. Yeah, three is fine. I just, I don't want it to be too, uh, the little edges to be, the little wiggles to be too close to one another. It's, it's going to look too digital if we do that. And then the value for amount is 50 at this point. So let me go ahead and keyframe those two values at the end of my composition. 
bring that back upstream and maybe increase decrease the amount value to zero let's say and so let's see what effect that has as this is growing i want these little things to sort of grow and separate as they grow and so they do if you pay attention to this one here specifically you'll see what i'm going for it's kind of like the ink is sliding as you can see and that's exactly what i want so this works really well now let's go ahead and apply uh, to this, I am going to apply a uh, a blur, a radio blur. So I'm going to go look for CC radio blur. I want to apply that here, and I want to switch my mode, my type, from scratch to fading zoom. And I want to have this grow over time. So at this, at the end point, I want the value to be, or let's say, about 50. Yeah, that's fine. And then I want that to be zero at the beginning. And the reason for that is because when this starts growing, as the ink starts morphing and this starts spilling out through that filter, it's going to look like the ink is just going away from the center of the text, which is the way we intend our uh, ink to look as it's spraying on the paper. Now, this doesn't look anything like it, ink at this point. So we need to, now that we have these things growing from the center, we want to have the ability to... Um, to uh, uh, control the wiggling of it again, and that's what's gonna do the trick. And for that, I'm gonna use, once again, a turbulent displacement. I'm gonna use a second turbulent displacement. So I'm gonna apply that turbulent displacement. This time, however, I want to change a couple of settings uh, that will make this look a little bit more like ink. So first one is the size. I wanna bring that down to about 11 point or 10 point, let's say, right here. So that is a little bit more wavy. And I want to increase the uh, complexity significantly. So let's go to about five. And you'll notice that doing that automatically made the whole thing look like ink. Now you you control the the uh, wobble feel of it by changing the, the, um, the amount. So you know that you can increase or decrease depending on how much you want that to be affected. So you can go ahead and change that. You can keep it at 50 or make it 40, for example. So if you want the, te the text to look more like text, to be less bleeding, that would be one way to do it. Another one that affects it really significantly is the size of the, of the little um, ridges, let's call it that, that are created by the size. So if I bring that down to 5, it looks more like it's flat ink, and you can read the text a little bit more clear but it removes that effect of the inkiness sort of spraying. So you want to have something that works well for the project you're working on, for your composition. So with that done, basically all we have is just this thing revealed from the center. Now you can go ahead and fine tune this over time. You can now at this point activate the little red um, path that we had created and for the ink layer at the bottom, the text layer, apply alpha matte. And when you do that, basically you're going to get the text as if it was being written on the screen. That's basically the effect. Now, like I said, you can uh, at this point bring in any other shape. It doesn't have to be text. It could be anything that you want to bleed on the screen that has alpha channel. So, for example, if I were to go ahead and say I want to switch that ink, I want to turn that off, and I want to place uh, a logo that I have, and that's an Illustrator file, as you can see, basically, it creates that effect and it applies it to the whole thing, where this, without the adjustment layer, looks like that. So you can swap that and create that effect. Now, to sell this, you actually want to go ahead, let me go back to the ink, turn off the Unique Sports logo, and have it reveal as if it was handwritten. Now, let me go ahead and, and create a new composition. In this composition, I'm going to drop in the, per, the paper texture. Then I want to drop in my comp with the text being revealed on top of it. And then I want to switch the mode for that composition from normal to, say, uh, overlay. And I want to make a couple of copies of that. And now you have the ink reveal. And that's how you create that effect.